Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick. I'm running for the Texas State Legislature HD 18. I'm the pastor of King of Saints Tabernacle, a church here in Cleveland, Texas. And I am a MAGA candidate. I support our real president, Donald J. Trump, who was elected twice and won twice and is going to run again and win again. And uh, we need to support our president, President Trump. He was a very effective president. No one since Ronald Reagan, I think actually he bypassed Ronald Reagan. No one's done more to further the cause of conservatism and execute positive, working, conservative solutions that benefited all America more than our president, Donald J. Trump. We need to stand by him. They're trying to keep him from running for office. This is horrible horrible. Uh, we the people chose Donald J. Trump to be our president. He won in 2016. He won in 2020. And they stole it from him. And uh, I proudly have seen Trump in person four times and we need to stand up for election integrity. Is this a constitutional republic or not? Are we going to allow these deep state actors to corrupt our elections? No. You know, I'm not a big fan of President Obama. We had to endure him, but I believed that he legitimately won the election. I respect the office of presidency that he inhabited, even though he wasn't worthy of that office because he's a radical extremist, a left-winger. And honestly, I believe, I believe that Obama's still in power because look at, look at this joker, Biden. I mean, he can't walk up steps, can't walk down steps, he can't walk across the stage. I don't think he knows who he is half of the time. So he's not obviously not in power. Who is? Well, Obama moved a, he built a compound. He moved into D.C. It's unprecedented. Usually a former president leaves office and retires from politics. And this man has not. He's still running the show. It's deplorable. And uh, we need to stand up for President Trump and uh, save America and try to restore American greatness, which the Marxists, the leftists, and the Democrat Party, but also, sadly, in our Republican Party, I have to say that one of the things I love about Donald Trump is how he's purging the Republican Party. Trump, by standing up for America and pushing back against liberalism effectively, he's also, when he's doing that, he's exposing rhinos, fake Republicans. And they don't feel comfortable in Trump's Republican Party, so they're getting out and they're, they're joining their own, you know, birds of a feather flock together. They're flying out and joining the Democrat Party where they belong. Good riddance, we don't want these people in our party anyway. We want people who are serious about making America great again. And we need to stand with President Trump. And I want to say that my opponent is a rhino. He's a liberal Democrat. He runs the, the Republican ticket, but he's a Democrat. That's how he legislates in Austin. He's a rhino. He's a never-Trumper. In fact, I have my hat here. I got this at one of the rallies. I've been to uh, four events where I saw Trump in person. And uh, this is my Make America hat again, which I got from Conroe. And uh, when I am campaigning, I'm going to have this hat with me. And when Ernest Bales shows up, I'm going to offer him, say, here, why don't you put this hat in your head and let me take a picture of it. And what he's going to do, he's going to act like, he's going to react like Count Dracula does to a cross. He's going to turn his face and hiss. And, and he'll probably run and find the, the closest exit he can and get out of there because... Uh, the constituency, uh, the people he views as his constituents, uh, his people are the radical left-wing, anti-American, anti-Christian uh, CRT teachers unions. That's the people he belongs to. That's the people he look at as his electors, the, the, the people who support him in, in his political campaign and his legislation is the radical left-wing, anti-American, anti-God, anti-Christian uh, teachers unions, that, which are just political action committees and lobbyists and special interest groups uh, for the Democrat Party. That's all teachers unions are anyway. So I'm going to offer him to wear this hat. And I can tell you he's not going to be caught dead <laughs> wearing this hat. And I think that when I pull this hat out, Ernest Bales will flee. It says in the Bible, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So when Ernest Bales around, I'm going to whop out this hat. I'll try to get him to put it on his head, and we'll see him turn and run like the gutless coward he is. And uh, during this campaign, I'm going to expose his voting record and expose him as the fraud 
and left-wing Democrat that he actually is. Look, I'm going to say now, our nation's in trouble. These people are satanic. I'm talking about people on the left. I'm talking about teachers unions, too. They're satanic. They're overtly sat satanic. We saw it. What was the Emmys? They're actually doing live satanic rituals. These people are on Satan's side. They're Marxists. They're totalitarian status. That's where the Democrat Party is today. I wish that wasn't so. I wish they were more moderate than they were. And uh, we have to defeat them. We have to defeat them in these elections. And if they're consistently defeated, maybe that will force the, the left-wing Democrat Party to go mainstream or moderate. Either way, none of their policies are good for this country. They need to be defeated for the betterment of our country. They don't want to make America great again, and they we do, and uh, so we need to defeat them. We also need to, that's one of the things I admire about Trump. We need to fight them the way Trump does. Fight the liberal media, the fake news media. Take a stand for America. America is great. It's worth saving. God bless America, and of course we need a spiritual revival. We need spiritual renewing in this country. And that's when I appeal to you Till election day, for me, this election day is March 5th, 2024. What's going to happen on March 5th, 2024, is we're going to have the primary. And if we decisively beat Ernest Bales and I win, then at that point I will be the state representative elect, unless the Democrats run somebody against me. We'll see what happens with that. I doubt they will. And uh, I, I believe that we can get rid of Ernest Bales. If we get rid of Ernest Bales on March 5th, 2024, uh, then I can immediately, I, I won't be sworn in as a legislator, of course, until after uh, the election day in November and after I take office, but I can start getting busy as the de facto uh, legislator elect. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done and I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna get on it. I'm gonna start fighting for exposing what happened on the election day of 2020. I'm gonna start fighting for, uh, there's issues in my county, <laughs> and the three counties I represent, or I will represent, that have to be addressed. But there's other issues that I wanna address well, uh, uh, as well. Of course, the first priority for me, representing this, this district, is the needs and, and interests of this, the, the, the citizens of this district. And of course, I'm gonna be very concerned about that. But the problems that we have in our nation affects everybody including the people in our district who've been harmed by a coup. These people seize power. They've caused inflation, inflation. They've caused war and chaos and American decline. So we need to look at what they did, how the election was stolen. It has to be exposed for what they did. And then anybody that was involved in that uh, needs to be held liable and criminally prosecuted. Dinesh D'Souza proved already that they stole the election in his movie 2000 Mules. And he has all that information there. Uh, that True the Vote still has it. So we're going to use that information and we're going to arrest these people who stole the election. All of them. From the, the head honchos, the little guy that's the actual mule, all of them are going to spend a long time, hopefully decades, in prison. Then, after we deal with the stolen election, and you know, if they stole the election, a lot of these things they've done uh, aren't valid, right? If this is not a legitimately elected government we have, then they can't be uh, approved, you know, they can't be nominating judges or putting people in the bureaucracy. All those people are going to have to leave uh, because they weren't legitimately put in there because it wasn't a legitimate election. So we're going to attack everything they did. Once we prove that they stole the election, we're going to do every single thing they did it is going to be undone. Then we have to go to January 6th. If this was an FBI operation, as doubtlessly it was, watch the movie Capital Punishment by Nick Searcy. If the rioting, I was there January 6th, by the way, I didn't see, I was there all day long, I didn't see any violence, I couldn't conceive of any violence happening. Uh, it was a very, the atmosphere was joyful and peaceful throughout the day. Like I said, I couldn't even imagine that violence like that would happen. I think it was an FBI operation. You know, either January 6th was an FBI operation or it wasn't. And uh, we needed to, to force the FBI to choke up all the files. We do know for a fact that there were dozens, if not hundreds, of FBI agents who were rioting, uh, I'm going to expose them, and uh, they're going to be arrested and prosecuted. If it goes to the highest levels of the FBI, then those people are going to be uh, arrested and prosecuted. How much can I do as a lowly legislature? Legislator, I can do that. Uh, I'll do as much as I can do, because somebody needs to stand up for our country and push back against this wickedness that they've done to us, bringing our country down and, and uh, oppressing people. Another issue that people don't know about that's important that we have to deal with is the politicization of the military. We have uh, the FBI is obviously politicized, 
and they're trying to do the same thing. They're trying to make the United States military forces the same way the FBI is right now. The FBI is basically a goon squad for the Democrat Party. We've seen all these stories about that. They're, they're corrupting the United States military forces. They have to be stopped. And uh, we're going to stop. We're going to have a dewokification of the military. And then we're going to deal with the, the Patriot Purge. The Patriot Purge. Forcing soldiers out of the military. How they did that. We're going to restore all our soldiers. And that's not enough. Any officer or general, field grade officer, or any officer, down to warrant officer, or, you know, a uh, second lieutenant, anybody who is involved with uh, the Patriot part, uh, Purge, Sergeant Majors, uh, they're all going to be held accountable for what they did, an attack on our Patriots in the military. Um, we're going to have to have hearings on the Patriot Purge, and uh, we're going to have to, uh, you know, some of these people might retire, and it's like, uh, you can't do that to our military <laughs> and our soldiers and retire. Um, you're going to face accountability for the crimes you committed against the United States of America. It goes to the FBI, too. So these are very serious issues, and uh, who's going to deal with them? I will, if I can. And I want to say that we're in trouble as a nation. We need a spiritual awakening. All these problems are symptoms to the disease of spiritual decline, of turning away from God. We need national repentance. We need national revival. I'm going to be having services here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock where we pray for our nation. Sometimes people go into despair. We can't go into despair. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. No matter what happens in this world, even if America falls, God's kingdom endures forever. And we should have joy and happiness. But I want to see, I was reading Jeremiah today, and the people are in exile. And, and uh, Jeremiah says the exile, seek the benefit of the country in which you dwell. Shouldn't we not seek the benefit of the United States of America? Shouldn't we preserve America as the greatest nation on earth, as a land of freedom and opportunity? While people in the FBI and the left-wing media uh, try to bring our nation down and take away our freedoms, to collapse our constitutional system, strip us away from freedom of speech, the right to petition our government, the right of assembly, freedom of religion, the right to bear arms, they're attacking uh, our constitutional liberties. And we need to stand up, push back, and defeat these people. So please support me and come and participate uh, in our nights of prayer and supplication, that uh, the Lord, that, that we can pray that God would move his mighty hand to deliver and restore America so that America can be a blessing to all the world. And that's what we want, is for the benefit of all mankind. Uh, even the people that are on the other side, they're, they're lost, they're confused, they've given in to, to wickedness, and I, I believe in demonic influence. Uh, but the Bible says, who the man, Son of Man sets free, it's free indeed, and we need to preach spiritual freedom and liberation and a spiritual awakening for this country and national revival. So that's what we're praying for every Wednesday night. If you want to come and join us for prayer uh, and it's a way to meet me and support me as we go on this political campaign to save our county from Ernest Bales and the evil and wickedness and never Trumpism that he re represents.